COVID-19 testing for anyone who has visited these three KTV outlets after a group of Vietnamese social hostesses got infected. Still up in the air, an expected announcement on the Singapore-Hong Kong travel corridor is called off at the last minute. And bouncing back strongly, Tomasic delivers a one-year total shareholder return of almost 25%. Hello, I'm Olivia Kuei. You're watching The Big Story live in the Straits Times newsroom. You can subscribe to our channel so you never miss a single episode. 19 locally transmitted COVID-19 cases were confirmed today, the highest since June 17th. Of the 15 linked to previous cases, eight belong to the emerging KTV cluster. Four cases are currently unlinked. There were also seven imported cases. The health ministry is investigating infections among a group of Vietnamese social hostesses who had frequented KTV lounges or clubs, which are now operating as F&B outlets. Meanwhile, workers from three lounges are targeted for special testing operations. Supreme KTV at Far East Shopping Centre, Club Dolce at Ballastia Point, as well as Empress KTV at Tanglin Shopping Centre, where journalist David Sun reported from earlier today. Having spoken to some of the shopkeepers and the neighbours of, of this place, uh, what they told me is that um, they only began operations, I think sometime on, on 1st July, and before that it was all renovation. Um, so what people have said is that they've seen um, groups of women um, dressed uh, in, in you know, tight dresses and all that coming by, uh, believed to be KTV hostesses, entering the premises in groups of like five, uh, with men also entering. Uh, but again, you know, most of the mall is closed um, after like 8 p.m. kind of thing or even 9. Uh, but a lot of them come after that, so they're not really sure. Um, from what we understand, you know, um, the, 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 the group that came here, at least the, for the host, supposed hostesses, um, they also have been spotted and seen uh, by some of the shopkeepers uh, at Far East uh, Shopping Centre when they were on the way home, you know. Um, so they suspect uh, actually that it's the same group of, of girls. Um, from what we understand also, um, the, the KTV um, does not have a kitchen or at least, you know, it's not known to have a kitchen. Um, and what people are saying is that uh, they have been ordering food from, you know, the other f and outlets in the area to get it delivered in, in here when, when they're, they're guests or, or people. Uh, but what happens is a lot of these f and operators and, you know, the, the food people, they come in and leave the food at the reception um, and, and then they just walk out of the KTV and do not ask too many questions. Um, some of them have also said, you know, there's a the smell of uh, cigarette smoke when they walk past, even though this is a non-smoking mall. Um, you know, and you know, what people are saying is that they're very uh, frustrated that this has happened because this whole mall has been operating fine. A lot of them keep to the safe distancing measures. Um, they make sure to, you know, look after the, the, the kids that come by to the enrichment centre and the tuition centres here. Um, but then this has happened with, with the cluster breaking out. Um, what they also said is that, you know, there, there have been safe distancing officers who have been coming by daily, about four to five times a day, but they only come in the morning and in the late afternoon. And by the time this KTV opens, you know, the safe distancing ambassadors are nowhere to be seen. Well, Hong Kong has scrapped its scheduled announcement on the travel corridor plan with Singapore. According to our correspondent in Hong Kong, the announcement was expected today but was cancelled last night. Well, under the updated deal, both Singapore and Hong Kong will make it compulsory for passengers on these corridor flights to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19. But the plan is now up in the air after pushback from lawmakers last week, which came as Singapore shifts away from the zero infection strategy something on which Hong Kong places great importance. Meanwhile, according to its top diplomat to Singapore, Australia has a, quote, firm commitment to launch a quarantine-free travel bubble with us. But this arrangement is now more likely to occur by the end of the year due to the outbreak in Sydney, which had 89 new cases today. While it's a slight easing from yesterday's numbers, authorities are still considering extending Sydney's lockdown beyond the scheduled end date of Friday. For the first time, Malaysia has breached five figures of COVID-19 infections in a single day with 11,079 new cases reported today. Selangor reported the bulk of the new cases. It was reported earlier that 204 workers at a vaccination centre in the state have tested positive.
Despite the lockdowns and travel restrictions of the COVID-19 pandemic, Tamasic delivered a record year as global markets rebounded. For the financial year ended March 31st, its net portfolio value hit a new high of 381 billion Singapore dollars, up 75 billion over the past 12 months for a one-year total shareholder return of 24.53%. Tomasic invested $49 billion and divested $39 billion. Record numbers on both counts. Joining me now is The Straits Times' Associate Editor, Vikram Khanna. Welcome back to the show, Vikram. So, a one-year return for shareholders came in at nearly 25%, a turnaround from last year's minus 2.28%. How did Tomasic pull off, shall we say, a record year? Well, um, the main story is what happened in the markets. The, as you might remember, in March 2020, in the third week of March 2020, the stock markets crashed because of COVID-19. But from the end of March 2020 to the end of March 2021, which is the period covered in the, in the Timasic results, the markets did fantastically well. The uh, S&P 500 in the United States went up about 60%. The NASDAQ composite, which is the tech heavy index, that went up about 85%. The Straits Times Industrial STI, our own market, went up about 30%. And the Shanghai composite went up about 25%. So now all of that lifted the returns on Temasek's listed portfolio, listed companies. But what it also did is that when, when markets go up, what happens is that a lot of unlisted companies get listed. And when that happens in a bull market, there are usually huge increases in valuations. And that seems to have happened to Temasek as well. I mean, they note, they note in their review that a lot of their unlisted holdings became listed uh, during this period. So that is basically the story. Uh, of course, I mean, it's not just the markets. They obviously made some good investments as well. And they have, they have outperformed, uh, I think, some other sovereign wealth funds. For example, Norway's sovereign wealth fund turned in about 10.9% for 2020. It's not strictly comparable because that's 2020 calendar year. And we're looking at uh, March to March, but it still gives you an idea. So they've obviously made some good investments as well. Right. Well, let's look ahead to Tomasic's future. What trends are you seeing uh, that are emerging in its portfolio? Well, broadly speaking, I mean, they're, they're looking, they're building a quite different portfolio now compared to what it was, say, 10 years ago. So they've emphasized four themes. Uh, they call them uh, structural trends. They are digitization, sustainable living, the future of consumption and longer lifespans. Now, many of these areas are all the rage among investors, but the, these things involve investments in relatively new companies, not in household names. So if you take, for example, financial services, in the past, they would invest in companies like Standard Chartered Bank or Merrill Lynch or the big Chinese banks. But now they're investing in companies that many of us have never heard of. Uh, companies like FNZ is a British uh, wealth services provider. Companies like NIUM, N-I-U-M, which is a Singapore global digital payments provider and card issuer. And they're doing this not only in financial services, but in many other areas like, uh, you know, e-commerce, uh, biotech, blockchain, and so on. So the future will be pretty interesting to watch. Well, we'll, cert we'll certainly uh, keep an eye out on Tomasic, uh, that's for sure. Vikram, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was Vikram Khanna, Associate Editor at Good The Straits time. Times. In other local news, the Astana is reopening its grounds to the public on August the 1st to mark National Day, the first time visitors are allowed in since the pandemic. The last scheduled opening in May to celebrate Labor Day and Hari Raya Puasa was cancelled, but those ticket holders will be invited back for this upcoming open house. However, there will not be performances, tours, booths or food trucks. 
In a Facebook post today, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong called on Singapore to rally behind our 33 athletes bound for the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics. He also expressed delight that 21 of them will be making their debuts across a range of events that Singapore will take part in for the first time as well. With it being durian season, there's no better time to spotlight a durian business set up just this month by four airline captains left grounded by the pandemic. Meet Johnny Tan and Lo Guan Singh, two of the co-founders of Durian Pilots. Hi, good day ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, this is your captain speaking. Why durians? Well, um, a very good friend of mine told me that there's a chance in this business where you can eventually set up a company and if it goes on well, you can it'll eventually bring you passive income in future. So with this pandemic that shot all the aviators, there's no guarantee in our job at all. There's no assurance. So why not try? I mean, we got our hands bleeding most of the time. It doesn't matter, but, but when, you, when you see customers enjoy the fruit that you sell them, there's a sense of satisfaction. If uh, given an opportunity, I'll still go back to fly. Yeah, because uh, flying is the passion. So with the pilot license that we have, we still want to continue flying. We still have a few golden years, like maybe another 10 over years to continue in this career. So this business will not disappear. It will continue because you never know when you get a third wave and fourth wave for COVID. We'll keep this business as long as we can. We'll be run by our friends, pilots, and yep, we'll keep supplying yeah. our customers with good durians. Thank you for choosing Durian Pilots. We hope that we'll serve you well, and we look forward to serving you even better durians. We've seen a recent uptick in race-related disputes and incidents. There's also been greater discussion of issues surrounding race like discrimination and privilege. And so the Straits Times will host a panel tomorrow to explore how to improve understanding and strengthen trust among people of different races. Headlining it is Minister for Culture, Community and Youth, Edwin Tong, who's also second Minister for Law and chairs the National Steering Committee on Racial and Religious Harmony. Joining him are nominated MP Shahira Abdullah, Leonard Sim, General Secretary of Advocacy Group Hash Peace, Hafez Surori Zanjani, a grassroots activist, and Tamil Lavelle, news editor of SPH's Tamil Murasu. Well, if you didn't manage to sign up for this session, you can catch it at 5.30pm tomorrow on SG's Facebook and YouTube channels. Visit straightstimes.com for more news and videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well by hitting the red button below. I'm Olivia Quay. Thanks so much for watching and see you tomorrow.